Sometimes you've got to go outside of your comfort zone if you want to get better at something. That's exactly what I plan to do with today's villager hall build, not to mention the fact that I've got nowhere to put my villagers at the moment. Bruh. Originally, I was going to build a trading hall just on the other side of the small bridge in front of my house, but the trading hall design is getting way too big to put there. So change of plans, I think I'm going to work on building the trading hall right next to the breeder, which actually kind of makes more sense, so I'm considering it a happy accident. Serious question here that I welcome your feedback in the comments, but do you guys flip-flop on where to put things when you build, or are you super decisive and you know exactly where it goes? Please let me know in the comments. Okay, okay, enough jibber-jabber, back to working. While I finish clearing the land for the villager trading hall, I've got a story for you. Not many people know this about me, at least not online people, but I'm actually an avid woodworker. I love doing fine woodworking. And sometimes there are things about woodworking that remind me of a lot of the things that I really like about Minecraft. I love it when I can take an old, grungy, weathered piece of wood that most people would probably discard or throw into the burn pile and get it cleaned up and discover the beauty that is hidden underneath. And if you think about it, Minecraft is actually kind of the same way. You can decide to build in an area that maybe doesn't have anything particularly interesting about it. It's just kind of a plain old section of land. But it's what you do with that land that makes it amazing. It's how you terraform, how you build on it, how you make an entire story within it. It takes something that is ordinary and it turns it into something extraordinary. And not only that, but it's completely unique to you. Like nobody else can build exactly the way you do and you don't have to be the best builder in the game, but what you do is unique and wonderful and beautiful. So just keep building the way you build and love what you do. And that is everything I love about this game. Let's make a quick hop over and get rid of the sand that was marking the layout of the original location. It was really kind of starting to bother me that the pathway was blocked off, so it's going to be nice to have that opened again. So about this trading hall build, let's talk about the materials we're going to need for that. For the main walls, it's going to be spruce logs, strip jungle, and strip mangrove wood. And for the roof, it is going to be packed mud, mud bricks, spruce planks, jungle planks, jungle stairs, spruce stairs, a little bit of everything, and even more in addition to that. I'm planning to do a roof like I've never done before, and it's going to be really interesting, but I'm actually super excited about it. So hopefully it will turn out the way that I have envisioned. Now don't worry, I'm not going to make you watch me chop down mangrove trees for an hour, but I did think that maybe you'd want to go on the flight with me, even though I'm using my wings extremely sparingly because I do not have unbreaking or mending on them, and that's actually why I'm kind of trying to rush to get the trading hall done. But I thought it would be kind of a nice flight over there, and I would say it most certainly is because it's so cool to be able to see things from this perspective. It's so different when you're on the ground and you can only see what's directly in front of you and not the big picture. But this bird's eye view is gorgeous. You saw nothing. While I'm out here, I'm going to go ahead and gather some slime for a secret project I have in the works. Which usually means I will encounter every mob except for slime. Oh, alright, I am proven wrong. And very happily so, I might add. Come hither and dance with me, my beautiful green jello friend. And you, and you, and you, and you, and you. In truth, I don't actually think we need that many slime for the mystery farm that I'm planning to build at some point. But you know, it seems to be prime time for slime, so I'm going to get as many of the little things as I can before daylight. Green, but not jiggly. Never a good sign when it's an entire sea of green and not one slime to be found. Holy cow, there's a lot of mobs. A lot. A lot of mobs. What the heck? Ooh, I hope I don't have myself in a bad situation. Oh, this is not looking very good and I don't have my wings. I can't fly out of here. Okay. Oh, now I'm poisoned. Oh, this is really bad. This is, this is not looking good. Don't panic. Don't panic. I'm going to just swim away. I don't think there's drowned in here, is there? I don't think so. I should be able to make it. Dude, that really took a little bit of an unexpected turn. Okay. 
Recover, recover. How long is this poison going to last? I thought usually it only lasts a few seconds. That's nasty. I don't even know if I'm in the mood for you now, slime. But Okay, my gosh. All right, where were we? Okay, that's enough slimy goodness for one adventure. Okay, apparently we're not quite done fighting yet, but I am definitely ready for daylight and extremely happy to see the sun rising and... All right, fine, I'll sneak one more little slime in, but this doesn't count because I said we were done. So now the plan is that I am going to collect the mangrove wood without you so that you don't have to sit there and watch me chop, chop, chop wood all day. I am true to my word and you will not have to watch me chop one single block of mangrove wood. Okay, my friends, now that we've pretty much gathered all of the wood that we need for the build, the next order of business is to collect the roofing materials. For that, I am going to need some of the mud products, such as packed mud and mud bricks, which obviously means I need mud. So I have built a contraption. Oh, but this is not the contraption. These are pumpkins. The contraption is actually over this way. There it is. This is a mud generator, which will also need a building at some point. But for now, it is just the guts of the machinery. Just to give you a very quick and extremely simplified version of how this works, as you can see, there is a block of dirt sitting in front of a dispenser. When I place a block of dirt next to the piston and over that redstone torch, it completes a circuit, which first causes a water bottle to dispense on the dirt that is sitting in front of the dispenser, and then it advances that next block of dirt into place. The coolest part is, is that once you have everything set up in this farm, you don't even have to add any water bottles. It all refills itself automatically. As the mud blocks work their way down, it will reach the very end of this line of pistons. And once it covers that redstone torch at the end, it causes the pistons to fire, pushing that entire row of mud blocks to advance and it makes room for the next. So pretty much this entire gray platform here is gonna fill up with mud blocks before it doesn't push anymore and then I will take out my handy dandy shovel and collect the fruits of my labor. So I was thinking it might be kind of cool if the building that houses the handy dandy mud machine here, if it looked like a rundown factory. I think it would be a really fun build to do and there'd be a lot of different directions we could take some things and probably gonna have to clean up this area a little bit. I don't really think this water serves any purpose because it doesn't connect to anything. But of course, I am curious to know just how far down it goes. And if you know me well at all, you know that I have to go take a little peek. So hopefully I will not live to regret this or more aptly put, hopefully I will live. I will just simply live. Ooh. Dang, that actually goes down quite a ways. Do we dare? Oh wait, I don't have my wings on, do I? Oh, how would I know that doesn't tell me? No, I do not have wings on and we are equipping a shield. This does not really look very safe to me. And it looks like it kind of leads to nowhere. Uh, I might need to grab some of that copper though. Even when there's nothing you really need, adventuring is irresistible. Woo! Look down. Is there two or one? Oh, and there's cobblestone. This is extremely awkward. I have to do it. Eye contact. I don't really know why I'm doing this. There's no real good reason other than just because. Come on. Oh gosh. Why'd you teleport? There's a lot happening right now. Ah, oh, he's totally gonna come back and blindside. Yep. Well, that served no purpose whatsoever. From all of the gurgly sounds, there's really no real mystery what's hiding behind door number one. Surprise! Nope, never would have guessed it was zombies in a million years. Had no idea. Ooh. All right, can that creeper actually get through? Yes, he certainly can. Shield for the win! All right, now let's clean up this little mess in here. Valiant that you are holding the flesh of your own. I will take every last bit of that, including the very chest itself. Ooh, 
Ooh, Yowza, we have found ourselves a very big cave. This huge cave definitely has great potential for something. I just don't know exactly what yet. Ouch! Seriously, come on now, I'm trying to talk. But, uh, we definitely will keep this in mind for a future project, but for now I think I will just light it a little bit. And since there are no diamonds begging for me to take them, I'm going to turn around and go back up to the surface because it is not safe in here. Hello, fresh air. I have survived my trip to the caves. All right, let's start making our way over to where we are building the villager hall. And speaking of which, I do acknowledge the fact that we have a lot of terraforming that we still need to do over here. As much as I love the... Ooh, <laughs> as I was saying, as much as I love the waterways, they can be a little tricky to navigate sometimes, especially if you're clumsy like me. So I do think that we need to work on our pathways and some terraforming and maybe a couple other small little bridges, whatever we need to do. There are just so many projects that I'm looking forward to working on. Some just kind of little nonsense builds, but you know, those are fun to have as projects as well. I just, I like having a bunch of potential projects to work on just to keep things interesting so I don't get bored. But enough about future projects, so let's get on to the current one. As you can see, I pretty much have the layout in place, but I did save a little bit just so I could explain the thought process to you. It is obviously not going to be a block by block tutorial. Of course, for anything I ever make, I am not opposed to doing that, but I would definitely need to see a lot of interest in the comments for anybody that would like that. Figuring out where to place a large structure can be a little bit intimidating sometimes, so I just keep it really simple. I figure out where do I want the middle of the building to be. So in this case, it's where do I want the door to be. So I figure out that portion and then I kind of just build out sideways from there. So for the build I'm doing today, on the main front and back walls, it's going to be five blocks in between pillars. So we're just going to come over here and count out. One, two, three, four, five, and another pillar. And then on the sides, we're going to do one, two, three, and a pillar. And then we're going to follow the blocks of three all the way around until we get to the back door, in which case that wall will be five once again. Pretty much that is the simplified version of how I assemble this villager hall. And if you want the quick bird's eye view, here it is, just a simple cross shape. Very easy to lay out and then it all kind of falls into place from there. So buckle up because here comes the time lapse. Now, I certainly am no expert builder, but if I was to give you a little bit of advice, it would be to not be afraid to go outside of your comfort zone. A lot of people, and myself for a long time included, get in the habit of always using the same block palette, always doing the same style of roof. You've got to try to expand your horizons and challenge yourself to try something new. Study how other people build. Try and pick up a little tip here and there that you try with your next build. But just don't be afraid to go outside of your comfort zone and to try something new. Even if it fails, what matters? You can always undo it and try something else. So here is the build in its entirety. And I wasn't kidding when I was talking about going outside of my comfort zone. This definitely fit the bill in that regards because this is one of the bigger builds that I have done. The roof is definitely an area where I tried something extremely new. Normally I'm the kind that will do a single colored roof with maybe a different colored trim, but this is <laughs> kind of a, I don't even know what to call it, a like a surprise casserole roof, I guess. <laughs> it's got the spruce, it's got the jungle, it's got trapdoors, it's got buttons, it's got vines, it's got those viney things that everybody thinks are diamonds in the caves. I mean, like I kind of tried to paint an entire collage up here. And I actually really like it. Now, if we take a little trip to the inside, there's still a lot of work to be done in here. So over here, I put together a bit of a sample layout of how, for example, the librarians could all just be over here in this section. 
And I'm probably going to use the minecarts. I have a tendency to leave villagers in minecarts for easy moving around as needed. But I've got each of these sections that I can fill up with villagers. And then if I wanted to, I could even do the flooring on this second story up here and have an entire another floor full of villagers. It's honestly, it's more room than I will probably ever use for villagers, but it's nice to have all the options and I can most certainly use some of these rooms for some other things as well. So these will be some future projects. Even look at this, I even have a little attic storage up here. It's, it's so cute. But I'm super happy with the way this turned out. The other piece that I need to figure out is how to tie the villager breeder in with the villager trading hall. Now you know I've got that setup in here where they go in the minecart and then I've got the track down below that's going to lead them over to the hall, but I want to do the um, zombie villager discounts. So I need to figure out where is that going to happen at? Come on, cart. Ooh, I don't want to hit Clarence. Um, originally, I was thinking about having the curing take place in the hall and having a dedicated room for that, but now I'm kind of toying with the idea of either having a little section underground in between here and there, or building something above ground in between the breeder and the villager hall. So we'll see. That's something to worry about for the future, but just know that is something that will be to come. If you enjoyed this video, I think you'd actually really like this one too. Check it out.